<clears throat> Mr. Michel, I asked I, I forget whether it was Mr. Waxman or Mr. Clement about your uh, argument in the brief that all that's at issue here is whether or not the lithium was prescribed by a psychiatrist uh, or by someone else, uh, and that that alone uh, was not sufficient to affect the jury's deliberations. Now, they uh, uh, had uh, responses to that that elaborate on what they regarded as the significance of uh, not just who prescribed it, but the lithium itself. In other words, the, the uh, uh, bipolar determination, and uh, we heard him, you know, emphasize that contrary to what he had said, it's not simply for uh, a cold. I wondered if you could respond to that. Sure, uh, Mr. Chief Justice. I think materiality, I think this question goes to materiality. Uh, it's a comparative doctrine. You have to compare what was in the case before the new information and then determine whether the new information would have made a difference. And I think in this case, that, determin that determination can be speculative in some cases. This is perhaps the rare case where the defendant's own conduct sheds considerable light on the importance of the information. After all, as I said at the outset, Petitioner has known since 1997 that Sneed took lithium. And if you look at page JA700, that's the Dr. King competency report, it says, does this patient have a mental illness? And the answer is yes, underlined exclamation point. If Petitioner thought that Sneed's mental health was important to his defense, surely that would have been a bright red flag that he would have presented that defense at trial. And the notion that the marginal additional information that he was arguably based on the notes treated by a psychiatrist would have changed that decision I think is difficult to reconcile with the record. I would also note the way you get from the notes, Dr. Trump at question mark, which I think my friend said they were able to do in a matter of hours because it was well known that Dr. Trumpka was the chief psychiatrist at the jail, they already had the roadmap to do it. Remember, the competency report says that Sneed received lithium at the jail. They've had that since 1997. They could have simply gone to the jail and said, who's the chief psychiatrist? And they would have been told Dr. Lawrence Trumpka. And then they could have asked Dr. Trumpka the same question that they asked in 2023. And he would have said, well, if anybody treated Sneed, I treated him. But they chose not to do that. And I think, one, that's overwhelming evidence of lack of diligence and that the state procedural bar is satisfied, but it's also overwhelming evidence on materiality because Petitioner didn't do this out of negligence. He did it out of strategy, and that was because, as the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals explained on page JA991, arguing that Sneed had a mental deficiency or a mental illness would have reinforced the prosecution's theory that Sneed was vulnerable to, Glossom, to Petitioner's manipulation. Isn't there a separate question, though, about just he lied on the stand. And in a case where the entire case rested on the testimony of one person and his credibility, if you can show that he lied on the stand when he said, I never saw a psychiatrist and I didn't get a prescription from the psychiatrist, it was, you know, they gave me lithium for a common cold, and, and then the prosecutor says, well, that was a lie, I better correct that under NAPU, and, and doesn't, that seems pretty material to me. I mean, it's just your one witness has been exposed as a liar. A couple of responses, Justice Kagan. I think, first, there are threshold elements under NAPU, including whether this was false testimony. I don't think it was false testimony, but I want to take your question on its own terms. This false testimony, that Sneed saw a psychiatrist, that would have been harmful to Petitioner under his theory of the case. Remember, the prosecution... False is false. You know, like, whether you can, like, parse the content of the testimony this way or that way, the critical question that a jury is asking is, do I believe this guy in everything he says? And particularly, do I believe him when he points the fig finger at the accused? And if I know that he has gotten up to the stand and lied about anything, whether it's important or not, it might have been important, it might not have been important. If he's lying, if he's trying to cover up something about his own behavior, I'm going to take that into account in deciding whether when he accuses the defendant, he's telling the truth. I, Justice Kagan, I think in many cases where we were starting from the blank slate that the witness is presumed to be credible, one lie would be important. In this case, the witness admitted that he beat a man to death with a baseball bat. The witness admitted that he was testifying in exchange for avoiding the death penalty. The jury already had significant credibility questions about Justin Sneed. And I have to say, I find this, that an, an odd argument, Mr. Michelle. It's like this witness 
witness was so not credible anyway that we don't have to consider any further lies that he tells? No, what I think is difficult to understand is that the jury would have believed Justin Sneed and convicted Petitioner despite those problems, and yet because Justin Sneed saw a psychiatrist, according to the notes, the jury would have done a 180 and reached a different result. You know, and, and a NAPU violation is a pretty dramatic thing when a prosecutor says, like, whoa, stop there, uh, that was a lie. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, I think a, a reasonable jury takes that into account when it's like, wow, that was such a significant lie that the prosecutor had to sort of say stop. I, I I don't think that would have happened in this case, given the distinctive nature of the witness that we're talking about. I also want to underscore that this is a tangential issue. That Justin Sneed testified for five hours. The question about lithium was about was about thirty seconds. Would it made... so I... I'm sorry. Oh, no, 